Hi there, my name is Chris from Learn WP with Chris and today I've got a brand new video tutorial to show you how to make this wonderful looking website here. Uh, this is one of my favorite websites I've created. It has this slider image here where you can have three different or as many images as you like and it will just automatically play through. I'll be able to get you, show you how to make this heading here, how to make these circle icons and these little buttons which can link out to your different pages like this one will link to your about page, this one to your services and this one to a contact page. I'll show you how to make a text box and be able to make a little icon like here which will be able to link over to your blog page. I will also show you how to embed YouTube videos into your website and that work responsibly and perfectly from the website itself and can play straight from it. I will also show you how to make an about page. On the about page I will show you how to insert text um, and be able to put a Facebook light box on the side here, insert images and also to make links in your, your text to other pages like this one will take you to your contact page. I will also show you how to make a services page like this one here. I'll show you how to make these different icons and color them and put different icons inside them and I'll show you how to put them into two different sections on the website which can be pretty difficult. I will also show you how to create a photo gallery. This photo gallery here is super responsive if you click into one it pulls it out and you can just slide um, if it, when I hit these arrow keys here, you can just jump from one image to the other, super responsive, with lag, without any lag at all. Um, I will also show you how to create a blog page. And with your blog page, I'll be able to show you how to make them into little, little posts, so when you click into them, you can actually read a full one, like that. I will also show you how to make a contact page, like this one here, where you can have a contact form, a Google Maps, and your office hours, and everything like that. Um, I will also show you how to make this logo here uh, completely free and um, so you can you won't have to pay anyone for a logo because you can create one yourself for free as well as getting these high quality high definition images get them for free as well so if you're ready to start learning and to create this wonderful looking website then just sit back and watch this video and be amazed at what you can be able to do So to begin with, I'm just going to go through exactly what we need to get all of this complete. So first of all, we're going to need to get a domain name. A domain name is really important. It's the, the name of your website. Um, it's the address of it, in fact. So let's say www.google.com. Well, that would be Google's domain name. It's what you would type in to get to that website. Um, I can get you a domain name and it's only roughly about $12 a year and um, it can be a little bit cheaper. Um, you will also need to get hosting. Hosting is also really important. Hosting is basically another website or another company who keep your website online for you. It's the only way to do it and they're a super professional company that try, is the one that I use is Hostgator. They have pretty much 99.9% .9 uptime and um, they have the greatest 24-7 um, live chat so if there's any issues that you've ever gone through with this you can just message them you'll get a reply in minutes um, I will also have free coupons that you can use to get cheaper hosting with Hostgator um, I have three different ones the first one would give you your first month's hosting for one penny um, That's this is perfect for people who just want to try it out you know just to see what if it's really worth their time and effort and it's only going to cost you one penny that way and that code is learn Chris penny I can also get you 25% off your total hosting. So let's say you've got 12 months hosting. Um, I can get you all of that 12 months, 25% off. And that's Learn Chris 25 That code will always stay the same. And finally, I have a 60% off coupon, which comes with a 499 domain name. And that code is Chris60. This is a limited edition code. Um, it's only available for 2017 only. So if you are watching in um, these last two months, Get on that one straight away because you'll save a lot of money um, and it's going to do you a lot of favors. And the next step would be installing WordPress, which is free, which is brilliant. And then we will create the website, which is also free. Um, and on the website, like I said, I'm going to show you how to create a home page. And on that homepage, homepage, I will show you how to create a free logo and get HD images all for free uh, to use on your website. Um, and also create you an about page and a services page where you can highlight all the services that you or your company or your family or whatever it is that you're going to show can provide. I will also show you how to make a blog page so you can get your 
most recent posts out there and find a good place to put them. I will also show you how to make a photo gallery, um, a photo gallery which is super responsive and when you click on it you can just hit on arrow keys and it will cycle through all the images without any lag, super responsive. And I'll also show you how to make a contact page with a Google Maps and a contact form so people can contact you directly. So get, to get started, we just need to open up our web browser and go to hostgator.com. It'll look roughly like this. It does kind of change across the years, but it generally has this kind of feel to it. So the first thing we're going to do is click on web hosting. Now, if we scroll down, we can see that there's three available plans for us. We have the basic plan, the essentials plan, and the pro plan. The differences between these plans is the basic plan will allow you to have one single domain. That means you can only host one website on this hosting account. The essentials plan allows you to have unlimited domains. That means you can have as many websites as you want on this hosting account. And then of course is the pro plan which comes with a few extras like private SSL and IP as well as a free voice over IP phone service. I don't think it's too necessary, I think it's for real big businesses, um, but a census plan is something I normally go for because I do like to mess around and create multiple websites and that just gives me that accessibility. But for now I will just use the basic plan just for the purpose of this tutorial and to keep costs at a minimum. So once you've picked your plan, just click sign up now. Now you'll get onto the HostGator order form page. Um, so the first section is you could choose a domain bit. Right, a domain name, like I said before, is a website. It's pretty much a website name, like www.google.com is their is Google's domain name. It's their, their web address. So here is where you can actually register a new one. Or if you already do own one, you can just click here and type that in here. But for now, I'm just going to type what my website's going to be. Learn WP with Chris. And then I'm going to pick .com. There is other section, other ones as well you can use, like .org, .net, but I prefer to use .com. So there we go. It's going to be $15 a year or so, um, but of course I can get that cheaper. And I can get it cheaper as well by using a .club or .site or .net. Um, but we're not going to do that. We're going to go down here and we're going to untick Add Domain Privacy Protection because that does bill you quite a bit, and I don't think that's necessary. So that's it. it gives you an explanation of what happens if you don't have that, which I think is fine if you are just trying this out. But you've just scrolled down and you'll be on the choose a hosting plan. So here's where you pick your billing cycle. So you have multiple, a few options here. You have one month at 10.95, or you have 36 months at 3.95 a month, which automatically comes with a 43% discount. Well, like I said before, I have those coupons, so. We'll come back to here in a moment, but for now, I'll just leave that at one month. I'll leave that at about six months, actually, yep. Um, and if we scroll down, well, not scroll down, we just enter in a username. This is what you're going to be logging in to your HostGator with. So keep it something that you know and something secure. And, of course, stick to these things here. Um, I'll just make one real quick. And then, of course, enter a security pin. You can enter that, whatever you want it to be. And section three is entering your billing information. Self-explanatory, really. You enter your email, your first, last name, address, the zip code, and of course, your payment information. If you scroll down, there's add additional services. Just uncheck all of these. I don't find these any of these necessary. You can have a quick read, and if it is something that you want, you're more than welcome to get it, but I find they aren't too important. So if you scroll on down, we've got a total price of $80 here. This is for uh, six months of hosting and the domain name. I'm going to go through all my different coupons just to show you um, the price difference between them all. So the first penny for one month, that was, well, the first month for one penny, that was Learn Chris Penny. And if we click Validate, oh, it's going to add a few add-ons. It does this, it automatically adds add-ons. So you, you just make sure you go up and you turn them all off just to make sure that domain one is off as well. So that's now gone to $68. I've got a bit of discount of about 12 well, a whole month there, just for a month cheaper. Right, I'm now going to try to enter the next coupon, which was Learn Chris 25 And of course, it's made it too high, so we've got to take this off again. Make sure that one's off as well. Scroll back down. And now that's $62. So I've got 25% off for six months. 
pretty much a $19 discount. Or we can try Chris 60. And this one gives us up to 60% off and as well as $4.99 on our domain name. So let's see if this changes much. I'm going to make sure to uncheck that. So that's $57.55. We're now getting a $23 discount. See, we've got our domain name only for like $4.99. And we also got discount on our six months. So depending on how much you, you're, how much hosting you're going to get, coupons may vary. If you are only to get in the one month, um, I'd recommend just getting that one month for one penny. That way you're doing all of it for, for as cheaply as possible, you know. But once ever you've filled in all your information and made sure you've got all your additional service that you wanted or unchecked, uh, you've made sure you got your, bill, your billing cycle correct and you've picked a domain name, just scroll all the way to the bottom, click I have read and click check out now. It's going to take maybe about a few minutes um, to really fully process this, then you will get sent an email that's going to look a lot like this. So you get, hello, whoever you are, thank you for your order, and then you get, and it tells you what plan you've got, and here's the link to your control panel, it's a very important section, and what your username, and your domain, and your password, so it's got a random string of letters, and copy that for now, visit the control panel, so let's open that up, and here, you just log in with the details I just gave you. So this is us logged into the HostGator control panel for the first time. Um, it does seem pretty daunting. There's a lot of options, a lot of things to click on, but don't worry about them for now. We're just going to click on build a new WordPress site. Once you're here, you want to select a domain. So pick the one that you just bought or the one you brought with you and then click next. We now have to give it a blog title. I'm just going to give it tutorial admin user. This is what you're going to log in to the website with. So, so you can do all your editing. So just keep that something simple. First and last name. And of course, an email address. Once you're done, make sure you've clicked Terms and Service Agreement Accepted and then click Install. So that's the installation complete. Um, WordPress has now been installed onto that domain name. We have a username and we of course have this long password here. So whenever you're ready, just copy that password, click login, enter in your details, and then you'll be logged into your website. Right then, so once we're logged in to our WordPress dashboard, you'll see this menu on the left here. Um, but the first thing that we're going to do is actually change our password because we did get that random string. And I'm sure you'd rather to have a much safer password. So if you just go to the top right and hit edit my profile, You can scroll down from here. Here is where you enter in your new password. Make sure that it's something safe and secure and something that you will remember as well. Um, yep, good first use of weak password. Everyone knows to use a stronger one, but this is just for a test. So once you've done that, just click update profile. And then if you head back to the dashboard and then home, all right, so the next thing that we're going to do is just have a quick look at what the website looks like um, as it is. So if you just hover over your website blog's title and then click visit site. As you can see, this isn't the website that I showed you earlier on. This is actually just the default theme and a default set website uh, when you first get WordPress. So if you scroll down here, you can see a few things. It has that background image and then it has an area for your posts. But we can do way more than that and I'm going to get you onto that right away. So if you just want to head back to your dashboard. So the next step that we're going to do here is the plugin section. So if we just go over here where it says plugins on the left. 
And as you can see, it has a few things at the top here. If you just want to X these off, if you have the same things. Um, and as you can see, that we do already have about seven plugins already. I do find that these aren't important. And just to start with making the things way easier, we're just going to get rid of them all and then get you some new plugins, what I find really, really important. So if you just want to get a tick, I'll tick this here where it will activate, well, it will click and tick all of these. And then you want to hit bulk actions, deactivate first, then click apply. And then you want to tick them all again, click bulk actions, and click delete. And hit apply. And just make sure you say OK. So that's all the plugins deleted. And now if you just want to click add new up here. Right, once you're here, we're actually going to have a quick search for a few plugins. In fact, there's going to be eight plugins that we're going to download, which I find are super important to making the website that I showed you at the start. So the first plugin is called Black Studio Tiny MC. So it's this one here, Black Studio Tiny MCE Widget. It over has over 900,000 active installs. Um, so once you see it, just click install now. And then activate. And then once you've done that, you want to click add new again. And this one is called contact form 7. This plugin is mainly used to make a contact form on your website so people who visit your site can contact you directly. Once you've done that, just click install and then activate. And now the next one is called Huge IT Lightbox. Oh. So you want to hit add new. And then you want to type huge IT light box and it's this one here with 60,000 plus active installs and it's just called light box and then install and activate that plugin is really good for photos and, and viewing photos it makes them look a ton times better so now the next one is we're going to click add new first and then we're going to type meta slider and there's that first one there as well so click install and then activate and then again we're going to click add new and now this one is called page builder by site origin And that side origin as one word. And it's this one over here with over 1 million active installs. Just click install now. And then, of course, activate. And again, we're going to hit add new. And we're going to type in simple. Facebook plugin and of course it's the first one with 40k plus installs so just click install and then activate and again we're going to hit add new and we're going to type site origin as one word widgets bundle so that's site origin widgets bundle and it's the first one there with 1 million active installs click install now and then activate
And now that you've done that one, we're going to have to download, well, add our last plugin that we're going to get. So just click Add New. And then we're going to go over here and we're going to type social media, oh, all, all different words, social media widget free words. And it's this one here, social media widget. So once you click, once you find social media widget, just click install now. And activate. So now that we've installed all these plugins, you're probably wondering what a plugin actually is. Well, a plugin, it's, it's a piece of software containing a group of functions that can be added to your WordPress website. They can extend functionality or they can add new features to your site. Um, in the WordPress community, there is a saying that goes around, there's probably a plugin for that. It makes it easy for users to add features to their websites without knowing a single line of code. Look at it like an app for your phone. You have a phone, let's say an Apple one, and you can get apps that work co which coexistly work together and provide you new features for your phone that your phone didn't bring you to begin with, if that makes a bit of sense. Well, now that you know kind of what a plugin is, we're just going to move on to the next section. So the next step is is to pick our theme that we're going to use for our website. So if you just go over to appearance here and then hover over themes and then click. You can see that it, ha it shows you um, some of the older themes that come with it. The one it's got now is the 2017 and there are a the couple old ones 2015 and 2016. But we're not going to be using them today. We're going to click add new over here. And we're going to search, and we're going to search for a theme called Vantage. And it's a very popular theme. It's one of my favorites as well. It really does um, make the, kind of a, a really professional looking website uh, for a small business or even a wee blog or something personal. So once you find Vantage, it's one just called Vantage. It isn't called Neo Vantage. Um, you just want to click Install. and then activate. So that's your theme activated. Um, a theme pretty much is the skin to your total your, your website to start off with. It really gives you um, the building blocks and the creative start. Uh, fuck that bit. Scrap, scrap, scrap. And pause. Now that that's done, um, we're gonna do the next step, which is changing our permalink settings. Uh, and to do that, uh, we just go down to users, no, sorry, settings, and then permalinks. As you can see, it's set at this custom structure. So each link or each post that you make on your website is going to look like this, where it's going to use the year, and the month, the day, and the post name. I prefer just to use the post name. So that when you make a new blog post or a new page, it's going to come up with just what the post name is. So once that's changed, just click Save Changes. And then go back to your dashboard. So now that our permalinks have been changed, what we're going to do now is edit our pages and add some new ones. So if we go to pages to start off with, we're going to have a sample page here. Uh, to begin with, we're going to just throw this into the trash. So if you just want to tick that, click trash. And then if you click on the trash here, you can actually see what's still in it. And we're going to permanently delete this. Great, and now once that's done, we're going to click add new up here. And the first page that we're going to add is going to be called contact. This will be our contact page. So whenever you've done that, um, just click publish. And then um, once you've done that, just click add new and we'll add our second page, which will be our blog page. 
So once you've done that, just click Publish. And then add new again. And we're going to create an About page. So we'll call that About and click Publish. The next page, once we add new, will be called the Photo Gallery. So this is where we'll show off all our photos. So once you've typed that in, click Publish. And our final page that we're going to add um, will be called the Services page. So this is the page where you showcase the service that you or your business can provide. So once you've typed that in, just click Publish. And when, once you've done that, we're going to have a quick look at our website and see what it looks like now. So you can hover over your blog title and hit Visit Site. We can see we've got the new theme set up. So we've got this long banner header image here. And we've got our home, about, blog, contact, photo gallery and services page set up in the menu there. And we've got a bit of a sidebar going on down there with an empty footer. So once you've done that, we're going to go back to the dashboard and make this look a lot better. So our next step is that we're going to start editing our home page. So you can take a look at this now. You get a good idea what that looks like. So if we go back to our dashboard and go to appearance and then home page what we're going to do here is up at the top where it says custom home page we're going to tick that on and we're going to click save home page and now if we take another look at our website and our home page we can see that we now have these three different icons, three little buttons, which take us to three different pages. We've got a headline widget there as well, and a latest post page. So this does look a lot better than what it did before already. And so for now, just close your home page, and we'll have a look at this home page section here. As you can see, it has those three different circle icons, the vantage headline, the post loop, and the text. But what we're gonna do is start from scratch. So we're gonna just delete all of this, so if we can just click on that little wrench there, you can click delete row and say, are you sure? And do that for all three of them. Oh. So you hit the wrench, oh. Ho hover over the wrench, delete row. Yes. Hover over the wrench, delete row. Yes. So what we're gonna do now is do this from scratch. So we're gonna click add row from here and we're gonna have on the first one, a set row layout of one. So hit insert, and then we're gonna add another row. This time it's gonna be a set of three. Click insert, and then underneath that, we'll have another one with a set of two. Just like that. So once you've done that, we're gonna go to our first row here and we're gonna add a widget. And the widget that we're gonna use for this is called Vantage Headline. It's right here. And it's moved itself down here. So we're gonna just drag it up and you can put it straight into that row. And then once you've got that on, just click Edit. And here is where you can actually type in what the headline actually says. So here is where you would enter in your headline. Uh, mine, let's say, would be simple and easy. And once you've put that in, you can just click done. Um, and for the next section with the three rows here, um, we are gonna add in a couple more widgets. We're gonna add in the circle icon widget here. Oop, just drag it into that little place there. And we're gonna duplicate this twice and put them in the other two boxes. Just like that. And so the, for the first one, we're just gonna click edit. And you can type in whatever you want here. So for the title for the first circle icon, I'm just going to write for myself, learn WP with Chris. And the text of that, I am going to just type teaching you for free. And I'm just going to scroll down here and we're going to just have a look at the icon. So this is the icon it's going to show on the circle. 
Um, it's good here. Can, it's got a lot of items here, but I'm just going to pick a star. If I just type in star. I don't think I can type. But there we go. Star. Star. And if I scroll down even further at the more text, what I wanted to say here is learn more about me. And here I'm going to type a forward slash and then about. So what this is going to do is if they click this button where it says learn more about me, it's going to take you to the about page on my website. Just to make sure this has worked, we're going to click done. And we're going to click save home page just for the time being. And I'm going to have a quick look at it. And if we scroll down, we can see my header is there. And then we can see the Learn W, I put a bit of a spelling area there, but Learn WP with Chris, teaching you for free. And if I click on the Learn More About Me, it takes us to the About page, which is exactly what we wanted to do. So if we go back to our homepage builder here, I'm just going to edit that and fix that spelling mistake. And then for the next one, we're going to edit the second one. And for me, this one is going to say WordPress tutorials. And for the text, I am going to write our most up to date tutorials. And for the icon of that one, let's have a quick look. Um, have a scroll down. I'm just going to go for a dollar. That might be nice. And then I'm going to go down to more text. I'm just going to write check out our services. And then forward slash services underneath the more URL. More URL. URL. And then once I've done that, I'm just going to click done. And over to the third one, I'm going to type here to help. And there I'm going to write, got a question? Leave a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And for the icon there, I mean, a phone would be pretty good there. Wouldn't that phone? We're going for a contact. I'll try the phone one. And then if we scroll down, and of course you can change the colors of all the icons and the text here. And that's all down to yourself. I'm just going to leave it for now just to see what it looks like. And for the more text, I'm going to write out, check out the contact page. Oh, actually, contact us here sounds a bit better. And then forward slash contact. Once you're done, just click done and then save home page. And I'm just going to view that page, see what it looks like at the moment. There we go, we've got our three little icons there the circle, three circles with a star, a dollar sign, and a phone. And each of these takes us to our different pages that we have created, which we will now fully customized as well. So once you've done that, just close that. So after you've just checked out what we've done there, um, we're going to go back to the home page builder here and we're going to add in our final two widgets here, or maybe not a final two, but we'll add widget. Um, this one we will put in just a text box and then we're going to add another and we are going to put a site origin button. That's that there. and to cover over the text and we're just going to click edit and you can give us a title this can be just be any battle to text that you would like to put down on your site here I'm just going to put down um, some sample text um, lorem epsom lipsum and copy and paste this and then just click done and then go to the site origin button and we're going to press edit 
So you can write whatever you'd like for your bun, but I'm just going to put read more in our blog. And I'm going to put for the URL for that forward slash blog, because that's the page that it will bring. Uh, I'm just going to pick an icon for this. If I just scroll down, I'm sure we'll find something fairly nice. Um, Ah, that one seems nice enough. So we'll go for that one. I will select icon color. We'll leave that as black. That's fine. Um, if we scroll down, maybe hover over on design and layout. Um, we want to make sure this is centered aligned. And this button theme, we can make that flat. Um, button color. Let's make... For the button color, let's make that a bluish, bluish color like that. And then the text color will have that black as well. Um, I'm going to hover over here. Font size should be alright. And for rounding, I'm going to change that to very rounded. And then I'm just going to hit done there. So now if we go and if we click save homepage there. And we go and have a look at what the changes we've made. So we'll just refresh that. And we scroll down, we can see we've got this sample text here now with a button that takes us to our blog. And the one thing that I don't like about this is that it is a little too close to these things. I wouldn't mind a bit of a gap in between. So to do that, if we go back to our home page, and then if we add a row, let's keep it as one, and insert. And then if we add another one, another layout of one, hit insert. And now if we drag, oh, if we just use this arrows here, we can just move these. Oh, it's a bit too high. I'm going to just keep them in between my text and my circle icons. So now if I click Save Home Page and refresh, it's got a bigger gap in here, which spaces out the website a bit more and looks a little bit more professional. Right then, so the next step is to put our video embedded into here. So to do that, we're going to have to go back to our home page, scroll down to here, and we're going to add a widget. And this widget is going to be called... This. And the widget that we're going to be using for this is the Site Origin Slider. So if we just click that, and we're going to just drag it over to the right box, right over here, and we're going to click Edit. And here... We can see where it says slider frames. We're just going to click add and then add again. Oh, sorry, not add again. We're going to close that off. Uh, we hit this arrow here. Now here where it says background videos, this is where we actually add the video. So if we hit add and then that little arrow, we can just po sorry paste in our video URL that we're going to post. I'm just going to use one of my own. So now that the video is pasted in, Oh, sorry, post it in. Um, that should be the correct way to do it. And you just click done once you're finished. Save home page. And we'll have a quick look. So refresh your home page here as well. And there you go. There's your video embedded into your home page. And we'll play straight from it. Which is brilliant. Right then, so our next step, I think, is going to be putting in our social media icons in the footer of your website. And these will direct you to your, let's say, your Facebook page or your YouTube or your Twitter. And I'm just going to show you how to do that. First of all, I'm just going to click on blog here and just point out something here. We've got a sidebar here. This is what a sidebar is. If you ever see that coming up, this is what this is. You can throw in your recent posts uh, for your blog. But for the time being, we'll just ignore that. And we're going to go to the dashboard and we're going to scroll down to appearance and then widgets so now that we're on the widgets page you can see that we have this, this sidebar here which showed all those different things I just pointed out to you the thing is we're not going to be using it so we're just going to drag all of these out this is how you remove things from the sidebar you just click and drag them out or you can hit the arrow and click delete but I prefer just to drag them out, it just seems way easier. So the widget that we're going to use for the social media um, icons is this Acaric social media widget here. And we're going to click and drag it down to the footer. 
And first of all, we're going to remove the title. I don't feel that is important. So just remove that. And you can have a look at those different theme designs, but I'm just going to use the default. And we're going to click here where it says configure your social media profiles. So here you can actually pick the different kind of theme of the kind of buttons that you want to use. There's some very nice looking ones, but I'm just going to use the default ones here, set here. And I'm just going to scroll down. And here's where you can actually reorder them if you prefer them in a different order. And here is, of course, where you link, you paste in the link to each of the different things. So let's say I wanted to use my, my Facebook profile. I would just paste in my Facebook forward slash whatever page I want to be using. And this goes for the same for these as well. So let's say you wanted to use your YouTube channel. You would just copy it over and then paste it in. You can do these for the same. All of these, I'm just going to type in twitter.com just so it shows up the actual icon. I'm going to put, don't forget to put HTTPS. I'll say HTTP on each of those just to make sure that it works properly. And then whenever you're done, just click a save configuration. And now if we go and have a look at our site and we scroll down, we have our social media widgets. Right then, the next thing that I'm going to show you is if we scroll to the bottom here, it says a site origin theme at the bottom. There is a way that we can actually remove that and I'm going to show you how to do this. Uh, but just to let you know, every time the theme has to have an update and you update it, this will reapply itself. But if you do remember how this is done, you will always be able to remove it. So, if we just go to, well, back to our dashboard that is, and if we head down to Appearance, and down to Editor. Now, I know this looks pretty daunting and scary because you're seeing a lot of code here, and if you change any of this, it can mess up your whole site, but I'm going to show you a safe way to just remove that little tag at the bottom that says, this is a site origin theme. And this works for all other themes as well. So if you see where it says templates here, we scroll all the way down and we are going to find footer.php. It's always easy to remember because it's in the footer. So if we click on that, we're going to see the code that is used for the footer. And the one that we're going to be removing is this little bit here where it says the Vantage Footer Attribution. Um, and it, gives, it says what it says here, the site origin theme. What we're going to do is just highlight all of that, delete it all, and then click Update File. And now, when we go to see our site, and if we scroll to the bottom, it doesn't actually have it there anymore. It still has the social media icons title there. I thought I didn't put that in. Hold on, I'm just going to have a quick look. So if we go back to Dashboard, and widgets and then we go over to our social media icons it still has a title just put a space in it to leave it blank and then click save and now when we go to view the site we just have the social media icons we don't have anything that says social media icons. You can put a title if you like, but I feel like it's a bit unnecessary. So once you're done, just go back to your dashboard. So here we're going to be changing the images that show behind on here, this on the slider here. And, and to do that, um, I'm going to show you a website where you can get free high quality images. So if you open up your browser, a new tab and go to unsplash.com. This website is actually brilliant. You have free high resolution photos, which you can just use absolutely free and even has tags here. So if you wanted to click nature, it's going to bring up a load of nature pictures, which is fantastic. In fact, I think I might use one of these ones here. I'm going to just download that one there. I think that one's rather nice. Pick one. I might just have a quick look as well. I do like few of these. Download that one. Pick two. I 
and I actually I really like that one as well. So grab a few pictures, um, just whenever you feel like you've got enough. Um, we're going to go to a different website. So to edit these photos that we've just downloaded, we have to go to a different site, and that site is called www.befunky.com. That's befunky.com. And then you just want to click on this photo editor. Ah, English. So to start off, we're going to have to upload one of our photos. So if you go to where you downloaded your photo, type in whatever it was, and here we go. So the first thing that we want to do is zoom in to 100%. This is how big it's going to look on your website, which is ridiculously too big. So what we have to do here is just click on resize. And we're going to change the width here to 1200. And if I'm correct, it should resize the height as well. So if we go to 100% here, it's a much more nicer sized image. So if we just click the tick once ever you're done. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add a bit of text to this as well. So to add some text to this, what we have to do is just hit here where it says text. And then there's a, there's a few pretexts. Actually, some of them look a bit nice. I might use this carbon one. And you can type it whatever you want it to be in, whatever size you are. Maybe I'll probably make it a bit decent big. And I'm just going to type in what I want to type in here. And I'm just for the first one, inspire. And we might have to change the font to that. Or the color, sorry, at least. Um, let's, let's have a look here. Definitely needed to be bigger. And then we can change the, the background color of it as well. I think you can make that completely clear. Um, but I'm definitely going to change the color of the text because you can't see it at all. So you just have a fiddle around until you find something that really, really sticks out. And I think that's fair enough there. Um, so you can do whatever you want here, you mess around with whatever you want it to do. And uh, to finish this off, we now have to crop it. So if we go back to edit, and click on crop. What we want to change this to is 1080 by 420. Just close that. So here is where it's going to crop. So pick the section that you feel is exactly perfect. I feel that would look brilliant. So I am just going to click tick on that. And here is our final image I'm going to use for that, for the home page here. And I'm going to do this for the sec for the two others as well. So just save whenever you're done. Save that to your computer. Keep it either one of these, it doesn't really matter. Save. I pick one. And now we're going to do this again for the other ones. So here's my other one. I'm going to resize this. And what did I say before? 1200. So 1200, and I'll resize the height. Zoom in, it's not that small. Still kind of a little bit big, but that's fine. And we're going to add some text. And I'm going to just continue using the same one. I get this font size doubled. Do, 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 do. Oh, maybe not so double. Maybe that's a bit fine there. And then change the background color to clear. I'm probably going to move that because it's a bit, a bit odd to see. We'll type in something here. I'm going to put determination. These are the words I use to keep myself going each day. So, determination, we'll put that somewhere. We can maybe change the color. Let's have a quick look around. It might just be best off as white. Yeah, I think so. So put that straight white. Exit it up. And you can move this around wherever you like to suit yourself. I'm just gonna stick it right above the sun there. I think it's still readable. <laughs> Of course you're going to make this a lot better than me, but we'll just maybe find a nice, there we go, keep it high. 
perfect. Uh, and then once that's done, we now have to crop it. So we go back to edit, down to crop, and we can look around, and ignore all that, and we're gonna change this to 1080 by 420, and then click the tick. See, this is where it's gonna be. So, so I've cropped it with a little bit too high of the text, so we'll just move the text back into a better position. That's it sorted. Now, we'll just save that one, Click two. I replace it, sure. Right. Next one. We are going to upload a new file. And this one is pip free. That's a bit of a brighter one. And so if we just go to edit, resize, and we can change this to 1200. I will change the height to whatever, which is fine. Click tick. And now go down to text and add text and whatever you want font you want to pick uh, I'm just going to use type, I'm not typing anything here, I'm just going to type focus and of course we're going to make this much bigger maybe change the colour, just leave this for now do, do, do. so we can make this bigger font size larger Get rid of the background color by clicking transparent. Move over the text. Try and find. Oh, it might just work dead in the center. Maybe just put the photo size up a little bit just so you can have more focus on the actual word. Focus. Just want to move this into more center. Right. Now that's done, we're now going to crop it again. This crops it to the size of the actual slider. And make sure that you do this correctly so it fits in perfect. So it's 1080 by 420. And then you hit tick. Oh, change it. So just make sure you've got it exactly where you want it. Exactly like that. And then click tick. And there you go. So save that. Save that to your computer. Right then, once you've got your images and you've edited them correctly, if we just close all this now, just leave, do do do, and this is where we're going to be changing. So if we go back to our dashboard, and here where it says Meta Slider, right at the bottom, just click on that. And here is where it says Create Your First Slideshow, that's exactly what we're going to be doing. So we're going to add a slide, and we're going to upload some files. And if I remember correctly, we call them pick one. And we're going to add, add some more upload files. Pick two. And we'll upload another one. Pick three. So there's our determination, and there's our inspire, and hopefully this should be brilliant. So we're just going to add, not them one, not that one, oh. we're going to be adding that one, that one, and that one. Can we add more than one at a time? No. So do not, in any order you want to do it, Sam's going to go with inspire first, and uh, give this a title if you want, if it makes it a little bit easier and like a caption and a description, but it isn't too necessary, so you just want to add the slider. So there's our first slide. You can give it a caption and a URL if you'd like, but that's not too important, but we're going to be changing our width to 1080 by 420. Uh, you can keep the effect as fade, um, but we are going to be changing the theme down to Vantage Flex. And now we're going to add another slide, which is one of these other ones. And so we'll click on this one, add to slider. Just want to make sure that all the slides are, yep. And then we add the third one, which was that one. So that's three slides in. And what we want to do now is just click 
save and preview. Let's just save for now. So once you've hit save, we're just going to have to go over to pages here first before we check that out. And then we're going to go to our home page. And once we're on our home page, we're just going to go to the right here where it says page attributes. And where it says page, well, page builder home on the template, we're going to be changing that. Oh, actually, we're not. We're going to be scrolling down to where it says page meta slider. And we're going to be changing this to slider colon new slider. Uh, we didn't give it a name, so this is what it's called. And uh, whenever you're done, just click update. And now, if we refresh our home page, we now have our new slider, which is brilliant, except for the fact that the text is a bit off on that middle one. So what I would recommend for that is going back and changing the image and putting it in the right place. And in fact, I'm gonna do that right now. Just give me one moment. So I've just gone back and edited that image. So now if I refresh, there's my first one, Inspire, the second one, Determination, and the third one, Focus. All great high quality images on our website for free. I think that's pretty brilliant to be honest. Right then, so now that we've got our slider images sorted, what we're gonna do now is create our free logo. And I'm gonna show you how to do that, like I said there, just for free. And that logo is gonna appear just in here, right on the left. So this where it says WordPress tutorial and this call me maybe in this big white bar, it's gonna be gone as well. So to make our free logo, we have to go to a site called logomakeR.com. So it's L-O-G-O-M-A-K-R.com logomaker.com and you just want to exile this tutorial that's fine click next 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 right so here is where we create the logo to start it yourself off you can just search for little different things let's say I wanted to find something that represent the word learn I would type in learn and nothing would come in of course teach there we go um, we have a few icons here that represent things like teach so we can create any really kind of simple logo using this kind of stuff you can even use that Apple one there um, but I'm just gonna have a quick look around and find the one that I want to use so you have a good look as well and find that perfect perfect logo for your site right so I just typed in the word learn there so I'm gonna just pick out this one here I'll make that a little bit bigger, nice and big, just so we can see it a bit more. Um, so this is going to be the main main icon of my logo, just something simple. And I'm just going to throw in some text as well, where it says, learn WP with Chris. I'm just going to drag that, we'll click off and drag that underneath. Try and line it nicely. And you can throw in other stuff in here. We have shapes as well. I'm just gonna actually just throw in a couple of triangles. Let's throw in another one on each side here. Shrink them down a bit. Get them to the right size. Move them to both sides of that. Maybe put that in the middle. Stick that. And if we go back to our website real quick, we can see that it has a black background and if we're using a black image, we're hardly going to be able to see that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of this and turn it white. Except I might, oh, let's get it back red again. I'm going to just change this WP to a blue and change the rest of this white just to see what that looks like <laughs> right so if we click off that I know it looks like you've just got um, the worst logo ever but reality it's gonna look a lot nicer than mine and you've probably spent an extra hour or two just making that perfect logo so whenever you're done just click Save and then you want to hit option 2 it's a lower quality um, but it's completely free which is great you know so call it whatever you want logo 1 And if we head back to our dashboard. So once you're here, uh, we're actually gonna go to appearance and then customize. 
And what we want to do is go to site identity there and we're going to click select logo and we're going to have to upload that file. So find that file, logo one I think I called it. And whenever that's in, just click select. And it wants us to crop, um, but we're going to skip that. And as you can see, it's tried to fit it all the way up into the header, which of course is not what we're trying to do. So we're just going to go out of this. We'll hit save and publish first. So once you've put that in, we're just going to go back out of that. And we're going to find layout when it's a sec we find it. Theme design. Nope, not in there. Theme settings. Layout. Here. Perfect. So what we're going to do, where it says default masthead, we are going to be t going for logo in menu. So now you can see that the logo is now fitting straight perfectly into our menu. So if we click save and publish, and we give this a refresh, this is what it looked like before, and this is what it looks like now. So I know the logo isn't the greatest, but you would put a little bit more care into it and you can make the perfect logo using the Logo Maker tool. Um, but that's our logo done. So our next step is we're gonna create our about page. So if we just have a quick look at that now, it should be empty. Yeah, it's completely, absolutely empty. So we're gonna go back to our dashboard, get out of this. And we're gonna go to pages, all pages. And about, we're going to click on edit. So on this page, you are more than likely going to be describing uh, with a big, decent paragraph all about you or your company or what your website is all about. I'm just going to copy in some stuff in here, just a little bit about myself. Um, I can. This is, but this is pretty much just like word processing. So you can add learn WP with Chris and with that I can I can bold it I can italics it I can do whatever I want to do with that I can also add media and also make linked text I'm going to show you what I mean by that in a moment so first of all I'm just going to show you how you would just add in an image so I'm just going to add media here I'm going to upload a file select files just get a picture saved earlier uh, it's just a picture of me then. I'm just going to insert that into the page. And I'm going to make that wee spelling mistake better. So now I have an image inside my little description about myself, which is perfect. Um, here I've got what I am um, all about. And underneath here I have something that says, P.S. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask. I will always do my best to help my students personally. So what I want to do is change this hesitate to ask into a hyperlink so when you click on this it will take you to a contact page which i think is really handy and it looks really nice and super um i think i, I just think it looks really nice so we'll just go over here where it says insert or edit link you want to type in the place where it would be so i'm just going to go over here copy that and enter that in there. Perfect. So what else you can do is you can get all your text oh, aligned correctly. Um, so let's say you want all this to the right, you can align that to the right. And same for over here, which I think I might do. Learn all that to the right. And you can make sure the picture is on the left or the center. So if I click preview changes, I'll see that I've got myself a decent looking about page. And what I'm gonna do after that is realize that I wanna make this a little bit bigger, make it a heading one, just to let people know this is what I'm all about. And maybe nah, the text is a, a decent enough size, I think. And then whenever you're ready, you just wanna click update. So there you have it, that's our about page sorted. Uh, 
something else I'm going to add to this about page is a sidebar with our Facebook details on it. So to do that, what we have to do is go back into this and then we are going to go to appearance and then widgets. And once you're here, we're going to look for a widget that we downloaded. was a plugin that we downloaded earlier. It's the SFP Facebook plugin. And we're just going to click and drag that into the sidebar here. And we can give that a title if we like. Let's say, stay connected on Facebook. And then here is where we would enter in um, the Facebook page that we're going to put in. I'm just going to put in mine, learn WP with Chris. And down here, I'm just going to put show timeline, show events, show messages, and then click save. And once that's done, if we refresh our about page, we can see that we've now got stay connected on Facebook and we have um, our, our Facebook. We're showing our most recent videos. Brilliant. Exactly what I wanted to do. Uh, right then, so the next thing that we're going to do is just go over here and then right then, so if we go down to appearance and then customize and we go down here where it says static front page uh, we want to make sure our front page displays a static page the front page is the home page but the post page is going to be our blog. So every time you make a new post to your website, it appears on your blog and not on the front of your homepage. So whenever you've done that, just click Save and Publish. Right now that we've done that, we've done our post page thing there and we've put in our Facebook light box here. The page we're going to edit now is our services page. So if we just have a quick look on our services page, it's going to show a whole lot of nothing, which is exactly what it should be at the moment. Um, so if we go back, to the dashboard and pages. Now we're now going to be going to the services page. So click edit on that. Let's close all that off. Right, so once we're here, we're gonna click on page builder. This is gonna make it a lot easier to do. Um, we're gonna hit add a row. This first row is just gonna have one. And we're gonna add another row of two and then another row of one. These two rows, the top and the bottom ones, are pretty much just going to be used for padding, just to space out a few things. Um, but we're mainly going to be using these two little boxes here. And we're going to add a widget, and it's going to be a circle icon. And we're going to duplicate that five times. So in total, we have six circle icons. And we're going to put three on each side. These three circles are going to show what services that your website provides. And to, to make sure that we have it all right, we're going to click on edit. And we don't give it a title, but we can give it a text. A text and a title, to be fair. Uh, I do actually have things copied out, so just give me a moment. So there's one. Moon there. So we enter that in there. And then the next bit. And of course, you can change the icon color. Let's say you wanted to use a blue. Uh, what I would recommend is once you found the right color is to copy this code here. This is the hex code of that color. Just so whenever you want to use that color blue again, you can just copy and paste that straight back in so all your colors match up. So once you've done that, we'll scroll down and icon position is going to be left and the icon size is going to be medium. And whenever you've done that, just click done. And then we're gonna to go to the next one and we're gonna do the same here. So enter in your text, whatever it is you're gonna put in. There's the title, here's my text. And there's my title, there's my text. And here is what I meant earlier. So icon, so icon color, you want to paste in, oh, that code that I didn't write down. So I'm gonna to have to try and find it again. So you see what I mean. I hopefully get the right one. I'm actually gonna write that down beside me. So at least remember the name of the color and then scroll down, make sure left and medium. 
click done. And then the third one, do the same as we did before, copy the title. Well, of course, you're going to be writing in different things here and you're going to be putting in different colors. Just try to put down the most important parts of what you're the service that you can provide really and um, so like again we want to be typing in that hex code nothing five nine eight f b f there's that blue Let's see it works and left medium and um, before we get started on the right hand side i'm just gonna click update here and i just want to have a quick look at what it looks like at the moment so we've got our free circles, but they're in a black color. And I do actually want to put some icons in there, to be fair. It does make a little bit more sense to do that. So I'm just going to go back. And I'm going to hit edit here. And I am going to stick an icon in here. We'll just stick in anything now. Stick in a plane here, let's say. And if we click done and update, that's one of a quick look at that. See what this looks like now. So now we've got a wee blue plane in it, which is brilliant. So if we go back, we can click edit. And I actually want to change the background color to be that and that to be nothing. So the black that it was using. Are we going to do that? Select icon color. Hashtag 598FBF. So that's what I prefer it to have. If we scroll down, we actually we want an icon in there as well, don't we? We want an icon. So just go for anything. I slash. I'll go for an I. Seems a bit more normal. Click done. Go to the third one. I so want a quick refresh of that just to make sure I'm doing this correctly. Uh, hit update. I'll just do this one first. Icon, bus, and black. And if I just click done and update, and if I refresh this page now, there we go. Things are getting a move on. Right, so now we are going to do the right hand side. So now that looks good, we're going to just finish this off by doing the right hand side now. So if we go back to edit page, click on edit, and start copying and pasting all my other ones. Oh. Of course, you'll be doing something completely different and actually be writing in things that you want to be saying, just like I am doing here. Let's have a quick look at that services page. I'm going to start off with the icon being blue this time. So pick an icon, let's say child. Perfect. Icon color is going to be that blue. I should really copy and paste this. But 598F BF. Perfect. Background color black. Doesn't stay if you just leave it. I don't too sure. We'll have a look in a moment. Icon position, um, left I guess still, left and then medium, just have a quick look and see what that looks like, done. Uh, actually while we're here, um, here where it says template, default template, we're going to change that to full width page, no title, and then we click update. And if we go to our services page, what we're going to do now is hopefully remove this Facebook light box here, I don't think it's really fits in the services page and also this title should also leave as well so let's refresh perfect so now just have to finish these off and then we're ripping right so next one get your copy and paste ins wordpress themes check out our latest and best du -du 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 -du. Icon, let's go for a film. 
Um, and the icon color this time is going to be black and this is going to be that blue. So hashtag 598FBF and right add medium done and then finally the last one subscribe thumbs up and comment if you could do that while you're watching that would also be subscribe thumbs up and comment and if you could do that while you're watching that would also be really helpful thank you very much so just copy and paste that back in title and copy and paste straight into there and we'll pick a different icon Let's say soccer ball, perfect. Select color, and we're going to be putting that blue in here again, just because I can't remember. Five nine eight F B F. I'm getting good at remembering that. And yet, yeah, leave that as it is. Um, we said left, right composition, left was it? Yep, left and medium. And then click done, update. I'm excited to see this now. All right, let's have a quick look. Refresh. Right, as you can see, I've put it on the right-hand side. So we're going to go back, go to the second one, and we're going to see our mistake straight in our faces, where it says right. It's got to be left. Hit done. Update. And then if we give this a refresh, there we go. Much better. So that's our services page done. And we'll go on to the next page. Right then, so the next step is going to be our contact page, which is, of course, going to be empty at the moment. So if we go to dashboard, well, over here, go to pages, and then down to contact and click edit. And of course, we're going to do this to page builder way, so click on page builder, and we're going to add in a few rows. The first one will have free. The second row will have just the one. This is going to be one of our padding rows, just to keep a bit of spacing in between. And then final row is going to have two. So once you've done that, hit insert. So the first box is going to have a widget, and that's going to have the, the widget visual editor, which is right at the bottom. And uh, once you get there, put it in, click edit. And you can give it a title, but we're not going to. And we're just going to type in a few things here. So contact and press enter. And we're going to type in phone, colon. And here is where you can write in a phone number. I'm just going to write in any old things here. Just a random number. I'm not going to put anything on here yet. And then, oh, and then from here, you want to hit shift enter. So that makes a direct line underneath it email and then you of course put in your email so I'm going to put uh, hello and WP with this at gmail.com and now we're going to change this contact to a heading one and we're going to highlight it all and we're going to align to the center so once you've done that we can just click done and then we can hit add widget, visual editor, and drag that over to the second box and click edit. And we're gonna leave the title blank. And we're gonna write in office hours and press enter. And we're gonna type in week days, colon 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And then shift enter into weekends, oh, weekends. 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. Put a bit of space between that. And then what we want to do with this is highlight all of that, center it, get office hours, change that to a heading one, and then click done. And then want to click on this third box, add widget, visual editor again, click on edit. And here we are going to write location. And just a normal enter there, and we'll write in any old address, let's say 420 Ocean Drive, 
And then if we hit Shift Enter just for a small one, and we can type in Miami FL Florida. And of course, like we did before, what we're going to do is highlight all of that, center it, and then highlight location, change that to a heading one, and then we're going to hit done. So now if we hit update, and we go and have a look at our contact page, it shows that we have the contact on the left, office hours in the middle, and our location on the right hand side. We do have this Facebook light box here, you can keep this if you want. Um, but for now we're just going to go back to the edit page. Right then, so if you just continue following what I'm doing here, um, we're just going to go over to page attributes and click full width page, no title. That will get rid of the Facebook light box that I don't feel that we need. And while we're here, if you want to open up a new tab and go to contact, See, so he says contact form. We're going to go over to here. It says edit. Click on that. And where it says mail, um, it's going to say, so it says to chandertwig1 at gmail.com. That's me. So this is where if people were wanting to contact you on your website as it is now, they will send the, if they want they'll send an email directly to this email here you can change this to whatever it is as it stands it's going to be the email address that you signed up to wordpress with uh, but this can obviously be changed and you can change uh, the subject and additional parts of the body as well but for now we're just going to click save and we'll go back into contact because we still need to be here and you see this short code here we're going to have to copy that and we're going to take it back to this page here and we are going to add a widget to the bottom left and it's going to be a visual editor and if we click edit on the visual editor make sure that it clicks on this visual tab here not on text but on visual and if we paste that short code which says this little bit of code here and then we click done and then update And now if we go to our contact page, give it a refresh. Now watch out for this to, to remove, this to disappear, and a contact form to come in. Brilliant. So we have a contact office hours location, and people just enter in here, and you'll get an email as soon as they click send. But I feel like we're missing one big thing here, and I feel like we could fit in a perfect Google map of any location that you would like, or even if you want it to be a business or where you want to be. So if we go back to edit page, so to get that Google Maps into our into our page here, what we need to do is go to maps.google.com. Uh, once you're here, we can type in our location. Um, so let's say I was using the one I used, 420 Ocean Drive, Miami Beach. That will take us to here. So to use this map, we now have to click share. And then we want to click on embedded map. And we can change this to a small, medium, or large, or a custom size. I'm just going to go for a 700 by 435. And it's previous actual size. Now oh, that's perfect. That's exactly how big I wanted it. Um, so what we do now is then copy this code, go back to our page, click on this, add a widget, visual editor, and then click on edit there. Make sure it's on visual. And if we paste that code in here and click done and an update, if everything went all well, then when I refresh this, they should be, oh, I actually did this wrong. Um, so what I've done here is if we go back into visual editor, copy this again, delete, it actually goes in the text box, not the visual one my mistake there so if we paste that in click done and then update we should be able to then refresh our contact page and the map is now there brilliant so as you can see this is our contact page looking already fantastic so the next step that we're going to do here is our blog page 
So to do that, we have to go back to our dashboard, and then we're going to go to Pages. Pages, yep. Yeah. Actually, no, we're going to go to Posts. And we can see we already have a post here already. We're just going to click that and stick that in the trash. And go to your trash and completely remove that because we don't need that. Delete permanently. And now we're just going to hit Add New. And we'll give us any old title. I'm just going to put blog post one for now. And I've copied and pasted copy and paste something here. And I'm just going to paste that in. And what I could do with this is make that a we've got a visual. And if we make that into a heading one. Oh, undo that. Just leave that as it is. And once you've done that, we're just going to click Publish. And if we have a quick look at our blog page now, we can see that we have a full blog post right here. But what we want to do with this blog is make it so it doesn't show all of it in one go. And to do that, um, we're going to go back to here and we're going to go to Customize. So Appearance, Customize. And we're going to go to theme settings and we're going to go to blog. And here where it says post content, choose how to display posts. We're going to change that to post excerpt. So once we click save and publish on that and go to our blog page and refresh, we now only have just the one blog post. And if we click on it, it will open up a whole page for that blog post. So just to add a little bit more to this, I'm just going to add another page to that. So I'm sorry, another post. So I'll go to posts again. Click add new. Blog post 2. Paste some more in again. And you can also add images or anything you want to this uh, to make your blog perfect. And then you just click publish. And if we go to our blog page and refresh, we now have two separate blog posts, which we can then read if we click into them. So now that we've done our blog page, what we're going to do now is our photo gallery page. So if we click on photo gallery, it should be completely empty, which it is. Um, so if we go back to our dashboard here, and uh, now we just want to go to pages. And on pages, we want to click on photo gallery. And here we're going to click on add media. And once we get here, we're going to click on create gallery. And here it's going to um, be able to pick our images that we're going to use. I've already put in some images I want to use. So I'm just going to click on all of these. And you can go to Unsplash to get these pictures and you can go and use that editing um, website as well. What you would like to do is to make sure that all images are the exact same size. I've got mine down at 1000 times 625. I feel that is the perfect size. And of course can give in titles for your images as well. So if these are the images you want to use for your gallery, just click create a new gallery. And here we go. And what we want to do with this is link to media file and we want the size to be medium. So now once we hit insert gallery and then update, I'll actually before we get rid of update, uh, we want to hit template here and we want a full width page but we'll keep the title this time. So if we click update and then we go to our photo gallery and give it a refresh, we have our images and if you click on them they open up into a proper gallery. It's exactly the way I want it to happen. So now that we've got our photo gallery done, there's only one thing left to do and that's just to edit our menu and we'll show you how to do that. So if we go back to our dashboard and if we go to appearance and then menus, 
uh, here we can create a new menu. So let's give it a name, main menu. And what we want to do is create that menu. And we want to make sure that everything's in the right order. So we have our home page, our about, blog, contact, and we have our other home page. So we would like to get rid of that. So we just throw that out. Remove. And I would like to my contact page to be at the bottom. Uh, my photo gallery just above it. Well, actually, a blog just above it. Photo gallery services about home page. That's exactly the order I want it to be in. And I also want this to be my primary menu. And here where it says automatically add new top level pages, that means if you add a new page, um, it'll automatically be added to that menu. Um, I just like to keep mine unchecked for the time being. So if I hit save menu, and I go back to my home page and have a quick refresh, as you can see, my menu has rearranged itself. The only thing that I don't like is that it says home page. I'd rather it just say home. So if we go back to our dashboard, two pages, all pages, go to home page and edit. Um, just take out the word page and then update. And now if we go back to our website, give it a refresh. We have home, about, services, photo gallery, blog and contact. Perfect. So that's our website complete. I hope you've followed along easily enough and you haven't found common in any troubles. If you have, just leave a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And if you did like the video, give it a like. And if you would like to see some more videos, just give me a subscribe and I get them out fairly quickly. And I do have a lot more plans, especially with e-commerce and making an e-commerce website. But again, thank you again for watching and see you next time.